Hello, 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 hello. Let me get to YouTube. YouTube. I feel like taking a YouTube, but I've got so much work to do. I'm going to be probably working <laughs> while we're chatting. But um, organizing and reorganizing, I have to get things going. Anyway, okay, so, hi Margo, hi Ruff, sorry I had to leave abruptly, but um, I was late, and I had to get hot coffee, because all of a sudden I'm feeling cold, I don't know why, I just took my other, I should take my other ladies' menses. Hello Linda, so we're going to talk about Gypsy, Rose Blanchard. It was um, January, February, March. Yeah. About three months. Three months that she's out, and it's Splitsville for the couple. Now, it wasn't the first time they called it quits. Uh, they called it quits, actually, when she was still in prison. And I believe it was before. Before they were married or let me see I forget if it was but right before they were married I think it was right before they got married she put him through hell about something and then said it was they were breaking up and when they went on that strange talk show that she wore that control top pantyhose and the when she was on that talk show she was talking about how she is in all, all of her relationships and what she calls testing a man. She says testing a man, you know, like testing their resolve. Are they going to stay with you? Or are they going to leave you? And basically you uh, torment them to the point that they're, uh, Ryan's words, like hanging off the ledge. And then she keeps checking to see if they're there. And they thought this was great. And that, you know, and, and the talk show host who was with his own, I believe, fiance was shaking his head and agreeing with this. I believe so was she. So I'm a question like, OK, um, you think that's great? OK. But, you know, instead of finding out, like, what the heck is going on with that? Why is she doing that? I don't know. They were talking about it like it was some great thing. OK, that she's testing this resolve and he's still hanging off the edge and he's right there and. Anyway, they got a new puppy, you know, and I, and I wonder who has custody of the puppy. I think Ryan does because on his Instagram, you see him with the puppy. So I think she left him with the puppy, which I think is the puppy's better off. Okay. In my opinion. But anyway, she moved in with her parents on the bayou. Down on the bayou. And when I say parents, I mean her father and stepmother. Now, there's rumors already circulating that she's pregnant. Come on, get out of here. Okay, anytime someone is married in any tabloid, there's speculation they're pregnant. Um, there's been speculation about her being pregnant since she literally got out of prison. But I think she has her sights uh, set on other guys. And I think she thinks she's a celebrity and that she has all these guys after her or something. And she's not wanting to settle with Ryan. But she'll probably keep him on a string just in case things don't work out. That's what I think, you know, that's just my thinking. She'll go, you know, keep him there as the safety. But she's going to see what this, you know, celebrity status that she has in her own mind is going to bring her what uh, prospects it's going to bring her right and I think that's what she's looking for I think that he is maybe not the Adonis she wants us to believe I don't know but whatever it is the fire D was not enough to hold this together. Um, who knows? Maybe some women are, you know, after him. Maybe he's going to have a whole bunch of prospects after him. 
And he probably will. The cleanup ladies, right? Will come right in, and they'll they'll treat him the way he should have been treated. The cleanup lady. But anyway, let's let's see what we can um, gain out of this because I did see some information about a parole officer and that she was told to delete her other Instagram account, yada, 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 yada. She's desperate for constant attention. You're right, Jen Grill. Could this be all for attention? Yeah, it could. Uh, but she'd have to be really willing to throw away her relationship or you think that he's in on it and they're really not throwing away the relationship? I don't know. I tend to think it's real. I don't know because she's done it before with him hold on I'm just taking my vitamins and um, I don't know I don't know oh my gosh I can't believe what I just did you don't even know what I just freaking did <laughs> I am that is crazy hold on a minute Did I manage that one? That's what I'd like to know. That's crazy. Okay. Not, not okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. I have to eat a cracker because I have to eat I'm sorry, I have to eat a cracker because why does she wait till she gets the hand to take her vitamins? She has to eat a cracker. Your stomach's so delicate. Okay, it's Good Friday to all of you that celebrate, so getting closer to Easter Sunday, but let's talk about this. Hold on, I'm going to get our information here. I'm, I don't know why I'm cold all of a sudden. What is it? It's like 30. You know, I thought it was going to be nice. It looked nice for a minute. Open the windows and it was so cold. And now I see it's 35. Just great. Okay, so here is the post that was on social media. Gypsy. People have been asking what is going on in my life. Unfortunately, my husband and I are going through a separation. And I moved in with my parents' home. And I moved in with my parents' home. Down the bayou. Home on the bayou. I have the support of my family and friends to help guide me through this. I am learning to listen to my heart. Right now I need time to let myself find who I am. Okay, Gypsy. All right. See what people are saying about this. Um, um, people are saying that the fire D is divorce. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, let's see here. I'm just trying to see if anybody is saying anything that is going to give us any insider. I 
information, maybe. People say we all saw this coming. Not even close to being shocked. Okay, I don't think any of us are shocked at all, right? I don't think so. I would recommend. Oh my gosh, that scares me. I hate those ads that pop up like that. Now, it's funny because they still have a um, a lifetime series on, and I guess they're having a season um, two coming out. So, but I guess they'll just continue on with her. It won't matter who she's with, right? That they'll just continue on. She's moved out of the house with Ryan. It's coming out, oh, the second season is coming out in June. Let's see. Oh, it says, someone said that there are people who believe she doesn't want to be famous and that's, she's not profiting off of this. Like how much more obvious can it be that she's as attention hungry as her mother and just as much a horrible person to, to, to be honest, someone wrote. Let's see here. Okay. Um, okay. Well, somebody put, what is this about Nick's order of proof? Okay, so what is this now? So this is something in the Circuit Court of Greene County. This was Defendants Offer Up Proof, November 30th, 2016. And what it says is... Question. Approximately two years into their relationship, he told you that Gypsy told him her mother had cancer and only a few months to live and they should relieve her suffering, correct? Answer, yes. Question. And he told you it made him feel more convinced he was doing it, killing her for a just cause, correct? Answer. Can you refer me to what you're looking at? Question. Page five of your report, third paragraph. Answer. He said several things about that comment, and during my second interview with him, the quote that you cited was accurate. Let's see here. Outside of question, uh, answer, excuse me, outside of whatever contact he had with his mother, stepfather, and biological father, I think that was the extent of his relationships. Question, and is that the basis or the start of his relationship with Gypsy Blanchard? Answer, yes question do you know how long that relationship went on before they met in person answer as the best I can determine it was about two and a half to three years before they actually met question so the relationship would have been exclusively online answer that's correct question in various chat rooms and whatnot or do you know how they communicated answer well they met on an online dating site I think the majority of their communication was through Facebook question now you obviously know a little bit about her history as well, correct? Answer, yes. Question, and you've talked to and discussed these matters with Nicholas Godijan in the course of your evaluation, is that correct? Answer at length. Question, as anyone with autism spec spectrum disorder too would have to do, right? Answer, I'm sorry, I don't understand that follow-up question. Question, anyone who's diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder too who deliberates has to do it within the confines of that diagnosis, correct? Answer. And as anyone with an autism spectrum disorder, the disorder is going to skew their thinking and influence their behavior and have an impact on what they do. Question. The defendant knew he was killing Claudine Blanchard, didn't he? Answer. Within the confines of his autism spectrum disorder. Question. He planned to do it, didn't he? Answer, there's some question as to how much planning he actually orchestrated and how much he was following the directives of Gypsy Blanchard. I'm not sure how much Nicholas actually planned this himself. I think he was mostly following directions. Question, he discussed it with her over the period of at least a year, correct? Answer, give or take, the matter, the matter 
for a considerable amount of time. I don't know if it was a year, but certainly over six months. Question, whether she was sincere, correct? He questioned whether she was sincere, correct? Answer, he did. Question, and ultimately agreed to kill her mother? Answer, yes. Question, he was not suffering from any psychosis at the time of the crime, correct? Answer, I did not see evidence of auditory or visual hallucinations. Auditory or vis visual hallucinations, I can't speak tonight. Question, and there was no evidence of delusions at the time of the crime either, were there? Answer, no. Question, it was goal-directed behavior, wasn't it? Answer, yes. Question, there was no evidence of any confrontation between um, Claudinia, Claudinia, Claudinia Blanchard and the defendant that he reacted to, was there? Answer, no. No provocation by Claudinia Blanchard, was there? Answer, no. Question, you referenced a text message in your report, the, let me see, that Ms. Blanchard told the defendant to text a message her when he arrived at her address. Answer, what page? Question, bottom of six. Answer, can you direct me to the paragraph, please? Answer, question, last paragraph, last sentence, first three words. Answer, he said that Miss Blanchard told him to send a text message, hurry text message. Question, the communication between them would give them insight just on how they were communicating prior to the offense, wouldn't it? Answer, I don't understand the question, insight. A text message would provide insight. Question, did you review the text, the actual text messages between the two? Answer, no. Question, prior to your writing this report in this case, you didn't know what diminished capacity was, right, generally? Answer, yes. Question, and you did not specifically address it in your report anywhere, did you? Answer, I included verbiage that indicated he has severe mental disorder and the impact that I thought that mental disorder had upon his behavior in broad terms, basically indicating that this was a lifelong developmental disorder and that he functioned in a more childlike manner than an adult and what I thought were his motives were in committing the offense, which ultimately was to rescue her from captivity and abuse. Mr. Patterson, no further questions. The court, Mr. Perry, Mr. Perry, just a brief moment, a redirect by Mr. Perry. Question, what impact do you think Nicholas Godijohn's autism spectrum disorder level two would have on his, let me rephrase that, I didn't say that right. Nicholas, go to John's autism spectrum disorder level two. Would that affect his ability to deliberate? Answer, yes. Question. Now you said in your report on page 31, the defendant was particularly, and I'm talking about that last full paragraph, the defendant was particularly vulnerable by virtue of his autism spectrum disorder. He had limited capacity to consider or comprehend the nature and consequences of his actions. Hold on a minute. I just missed my page. Okay. Is that what you said? Answer, yes. Question. Now you indicated that Gypsy... And they say that Gypsy Godijohn suffered from Munchausen's by proxy. Answer. She was a victim of that. Question, is that a recognized mental condition in the DSM-5? Answer, no. Question, okay. She did not suffer from a mental illness that is recognized by the DSM-5. Is that correct? Answer, not that I know of. Question, not that you know of? And certainly, if she suffered from Munchausen's by proxy, that is not recognized as a mental illness in DSM-5. Is that correct? Answer, that's correct. Question. However, he suffers from autism spectrum disorder level 2. Is that correct? Answer. Yes. Question. Is that recognized by the DSM-5? Answer. Yes. Question. And that is listed? Answer. Yes. Question. So as far as you know, he actually does suffer from something recognized by the DSM-5. Correct? Answer. Absolutely. Question. And based upon your information about her, she does not at least what information you do have. Answer, that's correct. Question, I recognize you haven't evaluated her. Answer, right. Question, and you're not the only doctor that has been 
that has diagnosed Mr. Godijan with Autism Spectrum Disorder 2. Is that correct? Answer, no. There's been many diagnoses over the years, beginning when he was in the first grade. Question. Now, the prosecutor asked you about him. By him, I mean Mr. Godijan, being upset when Gypsy was not online. Why would this upset him? Do you think, based upon what you know about his mental condition? Answer, because... She was everything to him. He thought about her constantly, and she was his world. And so when she wasn't available to him, he became distressed. He also worried about her. He wanted to make sure she was okay, and the regular communication helped to ensure that. Question, now people who suffer from autism spectrum disorder, do they also, are they very organized and do things you mentioned the same way? Answer, they... They don't like change. They prefer sameness and routine. Question. And would that have been a part of why he was upset? Answer. Yes, it very well could be. Question. Now, with regard, based on the information you have from this case, who directed this murder? Mr. Patterson objects. Hearsay. Speculation. He hasn't even reviewed the police reports. Mr. Perry, the prosecutor went through all this stuff, Judge, and the court allowed him to go through a lot of this stuff and made quite a bill about his. N how that he was planning and helping about all that stuff, and I think it's fair, Mr. Patterson. I object to relevance. It doesn't go to whether a mental disease affected his ability to deliberate. Mr. Perry, Judge, he brought this stuff up, and he can't just turn around and keep me from bringing it up. Court Okay, overruled by Mr. Perry. Who directed it? Answer, Ms. Blanchard. They have chard here. They have it with the E here. Question, whose idea was it to kill D.D. Blanchard? Answer, it was Gypsy Blanchard's idea. Question, who made all the arrangements to do it? Answer, Ms. Blanchard. Question, who paid for him to come down here? Answer, Miss Blanchard. Question, who was one of the two parties reluctant to do it? Answer, yes. Question, who was that? Oh, was one of the two parties reluctant to do it? Yes. Who was that? Answer, Nicholas. Perry, that's all I have, Judge. The court, Mr. Patterson, Mr. Patterson, yes. Recross, examination. Okay. Question, those answers you just gave are based primarily on the defendant's self-report, correct? Answer, yes. Question, and so you haven't reviewed the text messages sent over the two-day period he traveled to Springfield, Missouri, have you? Answer, no. Question, and you don't know that he assumed the dominant role in those text messages, do you? Let's see. Answer, I have not reviewed them. Question, and so primarily you are relying on his self-serving statements, aren't you? Answer, well, I did watch the police interrogation, which was four DVDs, and it was lengthy, but that was, that was also the interviews of him, so my evaluation derives predominantly from my interviews and the police interviews with Nicholas. Question, he was able to deliberate, wasn't he? Answer, within the confines of his autistic disorder. Question, it did not prevent him from deliberating, did it? Answer, there was deliberation, but it was skewed. Mr. Patterson, thank you. No further questions. Mr. Perry, I don't have anything further, Judge. The court, you may step down and you are free to go. The witness, thank you, Your Honor. Witness, excuse the court. Anything else, Mr. Perry? Mr. Perry, I don't have anything else for the hearing. Judge, the court, Mr. Patterson, and Mr. Patterson, just argument. Let's see. The court says, okay, who wants to go first? Mr. Perry says, I guess it's my, my proffer. I'll go first, Judge. The court says, okay. Mr. Perry says, this is defendant's closing argument. This is... Um, about again, go to John, Nick, go to John, the person she had kill her mother. Okay, this is the closing argument there from the defendants. Uh, judge, the case on this is really critical in state versus walk up. 
a Missouri Supreme Court case in 2007. And in this case, there were really two issues. One that I think is really relevant here. The first issue that not that's not particularly relevant is the notice requirement, but also just the general admiss admissibility of this stuff. And they pointed out in this case that the excluded evidence went directly to the issue of Walkup's mental condition and its effect on his ability to deliberate. And Dr. Franks repeatedly said that this mental illness that Mr. or mental condition that Mr. Godijan suffers from would have affected his ability to deliberate. Yes, the prosecutor got him to say he could deliberate, but it was always within the context of his condition. It doesn't say that he can't deliberate. The case says its effect on his ability to deliberate, and that will be an issue for the court to decide once the case is submitted to the court if this evidence is presented as it should be for deciding what, their, what that effect is. If there's any effect, the stuff ought to come in that's admissible. It's pretty clear this is admissible. And I think the last thing any of us would like to do is try this case twice. And the courts have always taken the position that, that if there is any argument that something is admissible, it ought to come in. And then it becomes an issue for the, for the finder of the facts. The court in this case, or a jury, in a jury tried case, to decide what weight should be given to the evidence. If evidence is presented, obviously, the other side is allowed at that point to present evidence to the contrary. But to simply say that this stuff is not admitted because the state doesn't like what Dr. Franks is saying, well, of course the state doesn't like what Dr. Franks is saying because it doesn't, it doesn't further their argument that this is first degree murder. Dr. Franks presents some argument and to what degree that argument is, is going to be for the court to decide, but some argument on the issue of whether or not he had capacity to deliberate. And since this evidence and his autism spectrum disorder would have affected his ability to deliberate, it's pretty clear from this state versus walk up that this ought to be admissible. Again, State versus Walkup said the excluded evidence went directly to the issue of Walkup's mental condition and its effect on his ability to deliberate. Most of the state's questions, and maybe almost all of them, were impeachable questions, which have nothing to do with an offer of proof. And in our, oh. our, oh, can I love you, boy? In our, oh, careful, what's that? Okay. Um, and in our better issues at trial. The issue the court has to decide is, is this stuff admissible or, you know, is it admissible? And if it is, what weight is it to be given to the testimony? The question is, it's admissible, I think, is pretty clear from walk up. It's admissible. Now, once the court hears the evidence in full, which you heard today, plus whatever, additional evidence will be presented at trial, including impeachment, the court at that time will have to decide what weight to be given to the testimony. The finder of fact has, has the right to believe all evidence presented from a witness, some of the evidence presented from a witness, or if they don't believe the witness at all, they can, they have a right to disregard the entire evidence. And that will be the court's decision for the state to try to argue because the state doesn't believe it or because the state thinks it's not reliable. Well, that's a weight issue and that should not determine its admissibility. I think that the bottom line here is this doctor's testimony is that he believes in his professional opinion as an expert witness as he's been determined to be at least a hundred times in the state of Missouri and has also testified on this very issue. I think he said four or five times which if he's an expert four or five times that means he's been an expert. He believes he suffers from autism spectrum disorder level two, which is a recognized DSM-5 condition. He believes that the condition would have affected his ability to deliberate in this case. And that's the issue. And now he does talk about capacity. And I quoted it in my questioning of him.
He said about Mr. Godijan, he had limited capacity to consider or comprehend the nature of the consequences of his actions, so that's a direct comment on this issue. There are numerous references that indirectly reference this in his 30-page report, and of course the court has read the report because it was submitted to the court back when, when I disclosed him as a potential witness. And so because of that, this stuff is admissible. Dr. Frank should be allowed to testify at trial, and then at that point, the court should be allowed to do what all binders of fact do, decide what it means and what effect it will have on the court's decision as to whether or not Mr. Godijan is guilty and what he's really guilty of. The murder in the first degree carries paragraph three, third, the defendant did so after deliberation, which means cool reflection upon the matter for any length of time, no matter how brief. There are basically two parts to the, to the definition of deliberation. One is cool reflection, and two is that reflection for any length of time, no matter how brief. It's Dr. Frank's belief, as did apparently the psychologist in the state versus walk up, that the mental condition of Mr. Godijan would have affected his ability to deliberate. Paragraph three are the three elements that the state has to prove to make a murder in the first degree. His mental condition, unlike Gypsy Blanchard's mental condition, is a recognized mental condition in the DSM-5, the current manual the psychologists and psychiatrists use. Her condition is not recognized, at least the condition we know of. And I think that's, that's very, very helpful. I think his ability to deliberate is in question. I think we should be able to present evidence on that issue, and I think the evidence should be Dr. Frank's. I think the case law is pretty clear that it's admissible, and I would ask the court to admit the evidence, and then, of course, the court would be required to give it whatever evidence the court thinks it deserves at the trial. Of course, this is not the trial. This is just for its admissibility. Mr. Patterson State. Just to go back a little bit in time to remind you that part of our objection is the is that this disclosure of Dr. Franks is late and very late. The defendant was arranged excuse me. Hmm. The defendant was arraigned on August 7, 2015. On November 9th of 2015, more than a year ago, they announced they are having a psychological evaluation of the defendant made. That was done starting on November 29, 2015 by Dr. Franks. On January 11, 2016, during our pretrial conference here, the court ordered the defense and asked that they pursue an NGRI plea and to disclose all expert witnesses at the April pretrial in this case. April pretrial came and the defense announces that they would not be seeking any mental disease defenses and disclose no expert witnesses. On Friday, September 30th, some five months after the court's deadline, we were emailed a copy of Dr. Frank's report. And it's curious that you know the deadline for disclosure of experts was April 16th. They didn't have him go back and see, go to John until July of 2016 for the second for the second period of time he went and saw him. And so you have this late disclosure. You also have the fact that Dr. Franks purports to testify about forensic psychology, which is the intersection of psychological, excuse me, of psychology and law. And he doesn't even know the standards in Missouri. He's been asked a lot of questions about deliberation. He doesn't even know what that means under Missouri law. And I would suggest that he's not qualified to testify as an expert witness in this case because he's simply not qualified on this issue. He might be qualified on conditional release and other issues, but he doesn't even understand what he's talking about in this case. And so given the late disclosure, the fact that he doesn't know what he's talking about and that within that he also said the defendant deliberated. I would agree that this testimony is not relevant under 552 because it will not aid the court and it's not proved that the defendant did or did not have a state of mind which is an element of the offense. In fact, 
you would have to disbelieve him because he said he did deliberate. He's simply not qualified. It's a late disclosure. I would ask you exclude him. And then, alternatively, if you grant him, then I will consider this. Through the end of this week, whether I need to ask for our own mental exam so that we can have our own expert, which may affect our February trial date, which it does or it doesn't, but I'll, depending on your ruling today, I'll begin that process. Mr. Perry, judge, just quick. I want to, I didn't address the time issue. I didn't know that was really still on the table. I mentioned this back in, I believe it was October when we addressed the issue initially. As a lawyer, I have an obligation, an ongoing obligation that continues to this day to keep investigating, to keep working the case, and to keep developing this case. There isn't a point in which I'm going to stop and say, hey, I'm done. I'm not going to investigate. I am not going to consider, I am not going to evaluate anything further until we see the jury. And so for the prosecutor to suggest somehow that I've done this deliberately for any purpose is silly. I mean, it's simply silly. I did announce that I didn't plan on doing an NGRI defense and by the way, I'm not. I've not presented an NGRI defense. I'm not. I did announce that I am not debating whether or not he's competent to proceed to trial. Dr. Frank says he's competent to proceed to trial. That's not the issue. This is not an NGRI defense. This is an argument as to whether or not he can deliberate and whether his mental condition affected his deliberation. And Dr. Franks met with him in July again, and they provided this report, and I believe it was within 48 hours that I provided it to the prosecutor. I didn't sit on this report for three months and then say, wow, now I'd better give it to him because this will give me some strategic advantage. I provided it to the prosecutor, I think within 48 hours, as soon as I had a chance and realized this is helpful to us. I need to give it to the prosecutor and that was what I did. As far as expert witnesses, this isn't uncommon. How many times have you seen DNA evidence come in well after a case started? How many times do you see a fingerprint evidence come in well after a case started? Experts have lots of cases that they are evaluating. Dr. Franks has lots of cases he's evaluating, and so it's not uncommon. He met with him in December. He wanted to meet with him again. He did. He met with him in July, and then he prepared his report. These things take time. This is not a three-page mental evaluation. This is a 30 or 32-page evaluation. And so, you know, as far as the timeless, timelessness of the issue, you know, I wish, I wish there was a point at which I could say, I'm done with the case and, and let's just go to trial. But that's not how it works. And that would be malpractice on my part not to continue to work on... Hang on. Um, to work on this case. This case is huge in terms of the amount of reports in this case. I, and I don't know if the court ever tried to get records from Social Security Administration and school records and stuff like that. It's not an easy process, and that's not an easy process at all. And he lived in Wisconsin, as the court knows, and it makes it even more difficult to do it out of state. And, and you know, again, I, I'm sorry that it took so long. I stood up and I said a continuance is fine. I, I said that to the court last time. I understood that. And if the prosecutor needed time to do their own evaluation, which they're entitled to do. I'm going to understand that as well, Judge. These things can take time. This isn't the first murder case that I've had to be continued for, for this case or for this type of issue. And it wouldn't, and it won't be the last, unfortunately. There are very complicated cases that have very complicated issues. And if Mr. Patterson takes time to do his own evaluation, then that's just the way it's going to have to be. I mean, I'm not going to...
object to him asking for time to do that. He's entitled to do that if that's what he wants to do. So with regards to the timing issue, if it is, it is what it is. And it's certainly nothing on my part where I'm trying to pull some fast one or trying to do something inappropriate or unprofessional. That's not how I operate. But I do have an ethical obligation to continue to work on my client's case and to continue looking for things. And if I see something tomorrow that I think, wow, I need to, I'm going to have to do that as, as his lawyer. You would expect no less. And certainly the bar would expect no less from me than to continue to work this case. These police reports were not three pages of, you know, of a burglary or uh, this is stealing. There are thousands and thousands of pages in this case. And this case is only a year and five months old, I think. And so if it has to be continued because of that, again, I understand that. And I'm not going to make a big scene on that issue. I understand these things. As far as its overall admissibility, the walk-up case talked about whether the mental illness in Mr. Walkup's case affected his ability to deliberate. It didn't say prevented him completely. Did it affect him in his ability to deliberate? Dr. Franks was clear. The answer to that is yes. And for the reason, and that reason alone, this evidence and his testimony should be admitted at trial. And again, as I've said repeatedly, that the court gets to decide what weight should be given to that opinion but there is enough evidence to make it admissible. That's part one. It's weight, that's what we're going to have a trial for, and that's what I'm asking the court is to let Mr. Godijohn have a full and fair trial and present any evidence it has he has that goes to the ele any of these elements. The, and deliberation is the element for which we have some evidence that Dr. Frank says his mental condition will affect and I think for that reason, it's admissible and the court ought to let it in. And then, of course, Mr. Patterson can challenge it with whatever he thinks he has to raise in the court's mind, some question to whether it's reliable. I think it's admissible, and I think the court should hear it. And the court says, first of all, anything else, Mr. Patterson? Mr. Patterson says, no, sir. The court says, based on the offer of proof, I'm going to allow it in at the trial. And again, most of this goes to the weight that will be given. But anything else on the record from the state, Mr. Perry, do you want to discuss? Mr. Patterson says, do we have a pretrial date? The court says, how far out? Mr. Patterson says, which does not have to be on the record. And the court says, yes, let's go off the record and that was just that I don't know that was been interesting but it's the uh, model at once and oh my gosh now let's see here so hold on somehow I got out of what I was looking at Okay, so back, let's see if there's anything else about her here. So, um, there's really not that much in there about the break up there. Let's try something else. Okay. Let's see what this is. Gypsy Rose. Gypsy Rose and her husband have called it quits. The breakup comes three months after she was released from the Chillicothe Correctional Center in Missouri after serving more than eight years in prison for plotting to murder her mother, Dee Dee Blanchard, with her then boyfriend, Nicholas Nick Go to John. That's who you just heard all about there. So on Thursday, Blanchard shared an announcement. People have been asked, and I quote, people have been asking what is going on in my life. Unfortunately, my husband and I are going through a separation, and I moved in with my parents' home. Moved in with my parents' home. Down the bayou. I have the support of my family and friends to help guide me through this. I am learning to listen to my heart. Right now, I need time to let myself find who I am. That was on Facebook. 
The couple was married in a jailhouse ceremony with no guests, July of 2022. Oh, they were planning their wedding, right? Weren't they planning their, like, wedding do-over reception? The big thing? Did they ever have that? Hmm. Oh, yeah. It says, in an interview ahead of her release in December of 2023, Blanchard said she was going to marry the Louisiana Middle School special education teacher again after her release. And I quote her saying, we do plan on having a reception, a redo wedding with all of our family and our friends and the dress and the cake and everything because we deserve all that. We deserve that. I deserve that. He deserves that. Our prison wedding was just something to where we can make our vows to each other. It was something that meant something to us. And I think the party is kind of for everybody else and us, but mostly for everybody else. At that time, Gypsy said she was excited about moving in with Ryan and starting their life together. And she, and I quote again, I've never lived with a man and I grew up with a mom. So I don't even know. I didn't even grow up with a dad in the house. So I'm like, I don't even know what it's like to live with a man. Um, let's see. And now she's back to, let's see. Earlier this month, Gypsy shared a video on TikTok before deleting her social media platforms. And in the video, she apologized to all the people that I offended with a lack of accountability for the first month or so that I was out of prison and the lack of accountability in my interviews. I'm sorry. I'm learning. I take accountability for my part. And I'm saying this right now. I'm taking accountability. I did a bad thing. Okay. Now, someone is saying that, and more than one source I'm saying, says that she de deleted her social media accounts on the advice of her parole officer so she won't get in trouble and go back to jail. Let's see what else we have here. And Ryan. Hmm. The breakup. Okay, here's something else. Gypsy Rose Blanchard's dad gave her marriage a 50 50 chance before the split. Okay, well, I gave it after the split. Uh, Gypsy's father, Rod, doubted his daughter's marriage would last. Well, Rod, you weren't alone, okay? The 32-year-old announced her split from her husband, Ryan Scott Anderson, on a private Facebook account on Thursday. Her father spoke out in December of 2023 before Gypsy was released from prison. And what did Rod say? He said, personally, I give it a 50-50 chance that it's going to work. She can be spontaneous and make a quick decision and just jump into things without thinking. He also wished Gypsy came home here before moving in with the special education teacher. When her being on parole was over, live with him, just live with him, learn him. Her father said, she's grown and she was told what to do all her life. We wish she wouldn't have, but like I told her, if it doesn't work out, I'll be there to help pick up the pieces. And I really do hope it works out. Ryan's a great guy. He loves her for all the right reasons. Let's see. After her prison release, Gypsy... 
told everyone she was excited to set up a house and enjoy a married life and that she hoped to have a big white wedding. She also wanted kids and they recently adopted a pups, puppy named Pixie. I don't know who's got custody of Pixie. Let's see. The hamsters are running the wheel really slow tonight. Let's see who's got custody of Pixie. Gypsy Rose. Anything else? Anything else? All right, I'm going to go see what you're saying. So I wonder if Ryan hasn't issued anything about it, huh? I guess not. All right. All right. All right, all right, all right. Okay, let me have another sip of coffee. And go to where you guys are. So, should we take a poll? Let's take a little poll right now and see. Oliver, Oliver, good to see you. Very good to see you. Pokeroo, good to see you. Happy Easter. Happy Easter, Pokeroo. Chatters too. Bless you. Bless you too, Pokeroo. How are you? Happy Easter, Carolyn. Happy Easter, Pokeroo. Very good to see you. Hi, little lighty. Well, look at everybody that came in while I was out. Welcome to Rough and Ready for becoming a Sergeant Rambler. Well, Rough was always a Sergeant Rambler, but something happened with um, the debit card, so they had to put it back on there. Okay, they're gonna, you're gonna get the tongues, the tongues wagging rough. Ruff just became a Sergeant Rambler. Okay. Margot, Linda, Liz Tops, Jen Grill, hi, hi, hi. Oh, I'm in top chat, that's not good. I need to be in live chat. I'm probably missing even more. Hi, 61. Hi, how are you? Christine F. Hi. Little lady. Hi. Pokeroo. Uh, hello. Pokeroo, that was weird. A minute ago, I just saw Pokeroo was in, in green. It was weird. It's where it was, because I... Or maybe it was Pokeroo's... Have a lady. Why don't I see Pokeroo now? Where's Pokeroo? Oh, there's Pokeroo. Hi, Pokeroo. He looks like her mother. Mm -hmm. She used the word husband, not ex or ex husband. Well, he still is her husband. Wait, he is her husband. He's not her ex or her ex husband. I have mixed feelings about Gypsy Rose. Hi, sad. Happy Easter, happy Easter, Oliver. Hello, Elle, and Sandra M, and I don't see Sandra M, why? Dee Dee was a friend of mine. I can't figure out why she was going back and forth to Thunder Bay, Ontario, Doctors or Hospital. Dee Dee, wait, what are you talking about, Pokeroo? Dee Dee who, Dee Dee Blanchard? Dee Dee was a friend of mine. I can't figure out why she was going back and forth to Thunder Bay, Ontario. What? What, Pokeroo? Pokeroo, where are you? You joined Ethan's channel? Oh, thank you, Oliver. Um, she was very kind and helped me with my garden. The vase blew me away. Wait, I'm lost, Pokeroo. What vase? Gypsy did wrong by her mother, in my opinion. Okay, yeah, definitely she was done wrong by her mother, of course. Yes, she was, your friend, but she, but they were in Missouri and Louisiana. 
I'm lost. What about the vase? The case. Oh, the case. Oh, okay. The case, I see. I was like, the vase? What, what happened with the vase? What do you mean she helped you with your garden? Tell me more about that. I don't get it. I don't get it. What years were what years were was that uh, Pokeru? What years were that? Not vase case. Yeah, I see that now, Pokeru. That's funny. I was like the vase. I'm thinking like what years? And vase kind of fit because you said she helped me with my garden. And I'm thinking like you picked flowers and you put them in a vase. And then, I don't know, she threw the vase or what? I don't know. But I see you mean case. I got it. 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 Poke a room. Poke a room. Tell me poke a room. What years did you know her? What years did she help you with her garden? How did you meet her? How did you meet Didi? Didi Blanchard. Didi Blanchard. They used to call them Blanchard with an E on the end. Didi Blanchard. They were high society, you know. No, she dig out my bushes. Wait a minute, wait a minute. When? When did she do that? Dee Dee Blanchard? Gypsy's mother dug out your bushes? Yes, it's windy outside. Do you hear my wind chimes? Hi. Hi, 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 61. Do you hear my wind chimes? Hi, 61. Yeah. I got, oh, Sandra M. And your stuff is going out on Monday because it's going out UPS. Rough, your box of stuff went out today. Oh, Margok. Um, your stuff may go out tomorrow to wrap a few things. And then if it doesn't go out tomorrow, it's going out Monday. And then what else went out today? A bunch of stuff went out today. Chris Ree went out today. And Chris Ree and Mary Warren, Mary Warren, and Kevin Leonard. Kevin Leonard. What else? Um, Kevin Leonard. Mary Warren, Chris Ree. Sandra M, and then Margo. I'll go out uh, tomorrow, Monday, and then White Angel, I'll figure out your shipping. And then I'm pretty much caught up, and then we're going to have another auction, right? Yeah. Okay, so um, Pokeru didn't answer me. Okay, I can't wait around because there's people to do and places to go and people to see and things I have to do. So let's let's move on and see what else is new because I haven't looked at the news or anything. I've been working a lot today around the house. Okay. So there's another little boy here. What is this case? Ariel Garcia. Who knows about this case? Ariel Garcia. Ariel Garcia. Let's see what's happening here. It said the mother of the four-year-old boy reported missing earlier this week and then found dead was arrested on Wednesday for allegedly lying to investigators about her son's whereabouts. Janet E. Garcia, 27, had blood on her shoes and shirt when a Clark County deputy's took her into custody, telling the investigators that she dropped her son off at a friend's house and he fell out of a bed and hit his head. Janet appeared in court on Thursday and entered a not guilty plea. She was given a $1,000 bond and a court date of April 16th, but 
remained at the Clark County, Washington jail on Friday afternoon. The Everett police say that a body was found Thursday, and it's likely Ariel Garcia, who was last seen Wednesday at about 7 a.m. The medical examiner's office is expected to determine the cause and manner of death next week. Ariel's grandmother filed for emergency guardianship on Monday, citing his mother's substance abuse issues, which made her prone to vanishing for extended periods of time without warning. The order was granted the day before Ariel disappeared, according to the Columbian Clark County Sheriff's deputies arrested Janet Garcia after responding to a report of an unwanted person at an address in Ridgefield. And that person turned out to be Janet Garcia. Oh boy. When the deputy spoke with her, according to the affidavit, she had blood on her shoes, blood on her shirt, and she said that her son had fallen off a bed and hit his head. She said she took him to the hospital in Everett, but the wait was too long, so she dropped him off with a friend and took a bus to Ridgefield, leaving her car behind in Everett. But her car was found at a bar, at a bar parking lot in Ridgefield, just south of where she was found. Security of video showed the car pulled into the parking lot, and a woman who appeared to be Janet Garcia got out just after 3.30 p.m. on Wednesday. Garcia then agreed to be interviewed at a police precinct, where she reportedly gave them conflicting uh, information about her activities that day, and stuck to the story about Ariel falling out of the bed. She said that after she dropped him off at the friend's house, she deleted the friend's phone number and her own Facebook account and hopped on a bus in downtown Seattle, heading to Ridgefield. She couldn't explain how her car got to Ridgefield, but investigators say there is no evidence that anyone else drove it there. Wow, that's crazy. Poor kid. Unbelievable. And And the grandmother almost... Had him safe, right? Oh my gosh. Oh gosh, okay. A Las Vegas man allegedly had a friend live stream a murder and burning a body in the desert. That's great, right? That's good. Good, right? No, it's not. It's totally sarcastic but uh these guys Las Vegas police arrested a man they say encouraged a friend to live stream him killing another man so he could watch a warrant was issued for Stefan Jacobov earlier this month on charges of destroying or concealing evidence, harboring, concealing, or aiding a felony offender, and conspiracy to commit battery resulting in substantial bodily harm. Two weeks later, the Clark County District Attorney's Office added open murder and robbery to the charge list. The charges relate to August 2023 and the murder of Aaron Chavez. Another man, 30-year-old Gino Julian, was arrested August 13th after two tow truck drivers found him sleeping in his car in the California desert 10 feet from Chavez's partially burned body. Julian himself had called for the tow truck when his car got stuck in the sand. Investigators concluded that Chavez, 30, was beaten to death in Las Vegas and Julian was indicted by a Nevada grand jury. Investigators say Chavez and Julian argued via text before the murder, and then in one of them, Julian threatened to kill Chavez. So crazy. Stefan's charges indicate he was also texting Julian. In one, Julian asked him, where should I put on the show, and is there bleach or chlorine? In another, Stefan tells Julian to break his face and delete our convos. A video clip shows what appears to be Chavez's lifeless body inside a home, while others show Julian pouring gasoline on the body in the desert. Oh my gosh, what does it feel like to be disrespected? It sucks, right? Julian says in the video, I almost feel sorry for him. What else did you think was going to happen, you know? Julian reportedly told police that Chavez made a lot of money in a Ponzi scheme. 
Some victims of the scheme spoke with the media and said they'd given him money to invest and that money disappeared. It's unclear if Stefan and Julian were victims of the alleged scheme. Stefan is being held on $500,000 bond and must surrender his passport if he's released. A preliminary hearing is set for April 25th, and Julian is being held without bond, and he goes on trial in May. See people, right? Poor little kid. His parents, I just, I just don't understand. There's so much evil in this world. So much, it's crazy. The parents of a four-year-old boy who was assaulted and abused for years, uh, he was only four, okay? Um, so just imagine his life, right? Have reached a plea deal and before his death, have reached a plea deal that won't require them to admit guilt in his death, but will send them to prison. Jose Cuatro, 32, and Ursula Juarez, 30, entered a plea of no contest on Friday in the death of Noah Cuatro. They initially faced multiple charges, including murder and R, okay, and R, you know what R is, right, in the boy's torture and death, after claiming that he drowned in a community pool in July of 2019. An autopsy said the boy's injuries were inconsistent with drowning. Jose Cuatro was also charged with assault on a child causing death and, oh my gosh, S.A. with, like, really bad, okay? I can't even, of a child under 10, while Juarez was charged with one count of child abuse under circumstances likely to cause death. Sicko. The case brought renewed attention to the county's Department of Children and Family Services, which had reportedly been called to the home multiple times before Noah's death. They failed him. Eva Hernandez, Noah's great-grandmother, filed a lawsuit against the county, accusing the agency of failing to fully investigate allegations of abuse against the parents. He was twice in Hernandez's care, but both times he was given back to his parents. At one point, an aunt made an anonymous call to the child abuse hotlines reporting that Noah would say that his butt hurts and that his mother wasn't feeding him. Unbelievable. A social worker secured an order to remove Noah from his parents and undergo a medical or SA abuse exam, but was blocked from carrying it out and ultimately removed from the case. She was replaced by a social worker who sent an email saying she felt like, as a department, we have been picking on this family. The email was sent three days before Noah's death. Murder, you mean. Hernandez was given custody of Noah's three surviving siblings and is in the process of adopting them. This week, Jose Cuatro agreed to plead no contents, no contest to first degree murder, which carries a potential sentence 25 years to life and torture, which carries seven years to life. Juarez agreed to plead no contest, second degree murder, which carries 15 years to life and torture. They'll be sentenced on April 30th after hearing victims impact statements. Ugh, sickos, poor kid. Okay, now we've got So on Tuesday, federal authorities say that Alex Murdaugh violated the terms of a plea agreement by failing a polygraph test regarding his financial crimes. Oh, Alex. What a tangled web you weave, huh? Prosecutors who did not provide the specifics say the FBI interviewed 
Murdoch on four instances, and he was deceptive and avoided providing answers. They also claim that Murdoch failed two polygraph tests in October. In September, Murdoch pled guilty to 22 federal counts of financial fraud and money laundering. Murdoch agreed to cooperate with an ongoing investigation, including passing polygraph tests, prosecutors say. Murdoch violated the terms of his plea deal by failing the polygraph tests and dodging detectives' questions. Murdoch's sentencing is scheduled for April 1st. April Fool's Day. How fitting there, Mr. Murdoch. As part of the plea deal, Alex's federal sentence would run concurrently with his state sentence for similar crimes. Murdoch, a disgraced, disbarred attorney, was already sentenced in state court to 27 years for stealing more than $8 million from clients and his former law firm. Murdoch's attorneys are claiming that the FBI examiner who conducted the polygraph test made several comments that rendered it unreliable. Unreliable. <laughs> they allege the examiner commented about recently testing Joran van der Sloot, who admitted to killing Natalie Holloway in Aruba in 2005. And Murdoch's attorneys said that the FBI examiner told Alex Murdaugh that he didn't believe he killed his wife and son before asking him a, confusion, a confusing question about missing assets. Alex was confucus. There are, okay, this is um, a quote from Jim Griffin and Dick Harpelan. There are legitimate questions as to whether the government intentionally manipulated the results to void the plea agreement and achieve the prosecutor's stated desire to ensure that he's never a free man again. The prosecutors alleged on Tuesday that $6 million remains unaccounted for, and they wanted to have Alex Murdaugh's polygraph test sealed, saying it was an ongoing investigation. Interesting. Interesting. And there was also, uh, you know, the clerk uh, resigned, right? That clerk that wrote that book, right? I'm trying to see here. There's nothing on that Uber Eats guy. Oh, this this lady looks very familiar. He kind of looks familiar too. So the husband of a Florida woman found dead after she was reported missing in January has now been charged with her murder. Brian Estep was arrested in West Virginia. He moved to West Virginia after he was interviewed by police and after Amber Renee Estep was found dead. Amber Estep's mother reported her missing January 19th. She did that because the, her daughter missed several days of work. Brevard County deputies spoke with her husband, Brian, that day, and he told them... They got into an argument. We got into an argument, okay? As they returned from a medical appointment on Marriage Island on January 16th. And they had the argument, so he let her out of the truck when she asked to get out somewhere along Interstate 95. Here, let me out here. I can't stand it here with you anymore, okay? Get out, get out along Interstate 95, okay? All right, see you later. Hours later, Brian Estep's pickup truck was found on fire yeah, that's just, you know, I let her out on 95, but then my truck, unbelievably, was found on fire. Okay. In Port St. John, deputies searched an area of woods known as the Black Hole, where they found blood that matched that of the missing woman. Further, 
Information demonstrated that S-Step moved Amber's body from the black hole under the cover of darkness and then drove her around northern Brevard and southern Volusia counties until he later discarded her remains, where she was ultimately discovered off of State Route 46 in Mims. Amber Estep was shot multiple times and had severe head trauma. Since the discovery of his wife's body and the police interview, he moved to West Virginia, where he was arrested. They won't find me here in West Virginia. Let's see here. Despite Brian Estep's fabricated alibi, his attempts to destroy crucial evidence, and just the disgusting evil in his heart, our BCSO agents and crime scene investigators were able to directly connect him to Amber's murder so that justice can be served and her family can hopefully have the closure in her death. Estep has been charged with first-degree murder with a firearm, tampering with evidence, and is being held without bond in West Virginia, and he's pending extradition back to Florida. He's being held without bond in West Virginia until he is extra extradited back to Brevard County. Oh, man, buddy. This Missouri University Awards top prize. Oh my goodness. A Texas court Wow gave bond of fifty thousand dollars to a seventeen year old who's charged with killing an India born Georgia family of six in a drunk driving ca crash. And they've agreed to let him out with home monitoring on a $50,000 bond. Luke Ressecker was charged with six counts of intoxication manslaughter, two counts of intoxication assault, possession of a controlled substance, and possession of marijuana for the December 26, 2023 crash. The Texas Department of Public Safety say that Luke Ressecker's Chevrolet Silverado hit the Alpharetta, fa the Alpharetta family's Honda Odyssey head on as he tried to pass another car in a no passing zone. Ressecker and his passenger, another 17 year old, were hospitalized in critical condition. Family members said the crash killed. The man, 64, his wife, 60, their daughter, 36, and their grandchildren, 10 and 9. Another family member, 28-year-old Rushil Barry, was driving the Odyssey and was also killed. Wow. Another member of the family, Lokesh Padabathula was hospitalized in critical condition. That's crazy. Authorities say that Ressiker was not medically fit to be jailed last week when he was charged, but he later posted bond and was released. Huh. That's crazy. Unbelievable. Hmm. That is not. Hmm. 
Okay. Let me see. I think that we've got basically everything there. Let's just see something else here. Okay, so there's that nurse. Oh my goodness. Um, that nurse, uh, let me see, I'll show you her picture. This woman right here. Right there. All right. So this nurse charged in the deaths of 17 patients, but she did more than that. She berated and bullied a diabetic man before giving him a lethal insulin dose, according to the lawsuit. The family of a severely diabetic man who authorities say died at the hands of this nurse who was overseeing his care last year has filed a wrongful death suit against the facility where he lived, alleging it allowed the nurse to berate and bully him and ultimately cause his death. Former nursing home nurse Heather Presti has already been charged with administering excessive doses of insulin to patients, 17 of whom died. In total, she allegedly mistreated 22 patients. Some were diabetic and others were not. With dangerous doses, she administered at five different care facilities from 2020 to this year. And that's according to the Pennsylvania Attorney General's office. Now, the new lawsuit has been filed against one of those facilities, this Sunnyview Nursing and Rehabilitation Center in Butler County, Pennsylvania, where Nicholas Symbol died May 1st of 2023. The lawsuit was filed Wednesday in Butler County. The family's attorney, Rob Pierce, said he alleges the center and its operator was negligent and they failed to train employees to recognize and report abuse and they failed to remove Presti from Symbol's care, even though she had bullied him and called him a derogatory term. The nursing home did not immediately respond for any comment on their end. Let's see. The man, Symbol, was 43 and a resident of Sunnyview. He was a brittle diabetic which means he experienced large swings in his blood sugar levels. He had anoxic brain injury, blindness, and neuropathy, and thus required around-the-clock care. Presti was hired in January of 2023, and she was the manager of the unit where this man lived. In that role, she was responsible for providing direct care to the patients, residents, addressing their care concerns and conducting internal investigations in any staff complaints. The complaints allege Presti routinely insulted, berated, bullied, and abused Mr. Symbol, just as she had done to other residents. Staff allegedly knew she disliked Mr. Symbol and routinely called him derogatory terms in reference to his brain injury within earshot of other staff On several occasions, she allegedly prevented other nurses from feeding or giving water to him and had him eat alone when he was taken to the communal dining room. You know, where is, um, you know who I just thought about? Just a, Heather um, from Pennsylvania, the one who's, um, who was, she had a son and a daughter and she, remember her? She came on panel many times. Presti had already been linked to other suspicious residents' deaths while she was working in a, a grocery store while she was caring for him. 
On one occasion, she told other staff members Symbol was going to be the next one to die anyway. Despite these red flags, the facility did not remove her from his care, according to this legal complaint here. And it says that on April 30th, 2023, Symbol's nurse recorded his blood sugar at 167 mg over DL at 6.30 a.m. And just 30 minutes later at 7 a.m., Presdy documented his blood sugar had allegedly risen to 380 mg over DL. Presdy then injected Symbol with 60 units of insulin and his blood sugar plummeted. She then tried to reverse the drop by administering multiple doses of glucagon. The suit says she initially refused to call 911, but paramedics were eventually called after she was confronted by other staff members. Wow, that's crazy. Simba was taken to Butler Memorial Hospital for hypoglycemia, a condition in which one's blood sugar level is lower than the standard range. He was discharged and returned to Sunnyview that same evening. Despite having been hospitalized, the nursing staff allegedly failed to monitor his blood sugar and condition. That evening into the morning of May 1st, his condition gradually declined. Shortly after 4 a.m. on May 1st, a nurse at Sunnyview, who is not Presty, found him in a hypoglycemic crisis and foaming at the mouth. The patient's sister, Melinda Brown, was called and told to come to the facility at 4.30 a.m. She received a call from a nurse saying that Symbol had died. His cause of death was initially identified as a myocardial infarction. At first, Symbol's family believed he died of natural causes, but it wasn't until investigation by the Pennsylvania Office of the Attorney General that they ultimately learned that Presti had administered an excessive and lethal dose of insulin to Symbol, resulting in his death. The day Symbol died, Presti was terminated by Sunnyview for exhibiting abusive behavior towards residents and staff. After Symbol's death, she sent a sympathy card to his family saying Nick was one of a kind. Wow. The lawsuit and the said the center failed in hiring Presdy given her checkered career history, which included working at 10 medical facilities from 2018 to 2022 She was forced to resign or was terminated from each of those jobs due to abusive tendencies and behavior towards residents and staff. When she was at Sunnyview, she allegedly exhibited troubling and erratic behavior, but the facility consistently failed to train staff to recognize and report the abuse or neglect of residents. As a result, her abuse was allowed to pervade throughout the facility. The lawsuit said members of the Sunnyview nursing staff began to notice residents who, with whom Presdy had access to were passing away unexpectedly and or under suspicious circumstances, causing the nursing staff to believe that Presdy had involvement in their deaths. The suit outlines some of those other suspicious resident deaths, but the center completely and repeatedly ignored the concerns of staff and residents pertaining to Presti's treatment of residents. That's crazy. Weeks after Mr. Symbol's death and the termination of Presti, Pennsylvania Department of Health conducted an investigation at the facility, Sunnyview Operating LLC, and the center terminated or reprimanded staff who provided information to the department regarding residents' deaths or Presti's conduct. On May 24th, 2023, an arrest warrant was issued and she was taken into custody in connection with two residents' deaths from insulin-induced hypoglycemia at Quality Life Services, Jacora. She admitted to injecting those residents with the intention of killing them as she was subsequently charged with two counts of criminal homicide. Then in November, she was charged with 17 additional counts of attempted homicide and 19 counts of neglect of care-dependent persons for deaths at facilities in Butler, Allegheny, 
Westmoreland, and Armstrong counties. In Symbol's case, she was charged with murder and criminal neglect. This criminal investigation into Prezi is ongoing. Well, lawyers representing Presti, Phil D. Lucente and Jim D. Pasquale, say they are not involved with the civil lawsuits, but added that it's possible the former nurse pleads guilty to everything she's charged with, and that a status hearing has been set for May. If she pleads guilty, the only issue becomes whether she was negligently hired or negligently supervised, and what the damages are. The new suit, filed by Brown, Symbol's sister, as well as the administrator of his, his estate, speaks, uh, seeks unspecified compensatory and punitive damages and demands a jury trial. We were hired by the families of Heather Presby's victims to get answers as to how she was permitted to continue working in these facilities despite her erratic, disturbing, and abusive behavior. The more our office has investigated, the more questions we have as to why these facilities allowed these tragedies to occur. Hmm. Hmm. That's something. Something, something, huh? Wow, well, and then what happened here? A nine year old boy was found dead inside a burning car after his father doused the vehicle with gasoline and set it on fire at a New Jersey high school. This was following a domestic dispute at their family home. Manuel Rivers, 43, of Sayerville, was charged with aggravated arson, according to a news release. Wow, what? Sayerville police went to the family's home around 10.45 p.m. Thursday and were told Rivera had left the residence with the boy. At the same time, a fire was reported in the area of Sayerville War Memorial Hospital. High school, excuse me. When police arrived at the school, they found Rivera next to the burning car. <sighs> Said he had doused it with gasoline. He had burns to his body and self-inflicted wounds and was taken to a hospital. The boy's body was found in the vehicle, but it's not known if he died in the fire or before it was set. Oh my gosh. What the heck? This is so crazy. These people are nuts. Here are some disturbing details. Let's see what's going on here. Get this. Rivera is employed as a cafeteria worker and a driver in the Sayreville School District. He was hired effective January 1st to June 30th, 2024. The prosecutor's office identified the child as Rivera's nine-year-old son, who was a third grader. Wow, it's crazy. Wow. 
hold on one minute, let me just this is the school. So he went to his place of employment. His child wasn't even in school there to do that and Let's see what they say. Now there's no details. Mm. So he's been charged with his son's murder after the boy was found dead inside a burning car Thursday night behind Sayreville War Memorial High School. Manuel Rivera, 43, suffered burns to his body. He was charged with aggravated arson, endangering the welfare of a child, and the desecration of human remains. Sayreville Police Chief Daniel Plumaker Rivera said Rivera's charges were upgraded from aggravated arson following the results of the child's autopsy. Rivera was taken to the Robert Wood Johnson University Hospital in New Brunswick, where he is being treated for his injuries, according to the prosecutor's office. Let me see here. Rivera is employed as a cafeteria worker. We went through that. Um, around 1045 Thursday, police received a 911 call reporting a fire in the area. And while responding to that call, an additional call came in reporting a related domestic dispute. Authorities responded to Eisenhower Drive, where they located a woman who reported a domestic dispute that led to Rivera leaving the home with their nine-year-old son. Oh my gosh, poor woman. On Washington Road, near the rear of the Sayreville High School, police found Rivera alive with burns to his body and a self-inflicted wound. Next to Rivera was a vehicle that was doused with gasoline and on fire. An initial investigation indicates the boy was found dead inside the vehicle. The matter is under investigation by Sayreville Police and Fire Department. Sayreville schools are closed this week for spring break. Counselors and therapists will be at Woodrow Wilson Elementary School where the child attended Monday to provide bereavement counseling and emotional support to students and staff. Let's see, the Sayreville mayor said, uh, and I quote, if you are a person of faith, please take the time to pray for our student and his family, including his extended family at the Wilson School. If you are not, please take a moment to send your positive thoughts to him and his family. Sayreville Mayor Kennedy O'Brien said the community is shaken to its core. And that was, that first quote was, um, sorry, that was by... Uh, lab, L-A-B-B-E, I'm trying to see who he is. Um, someone from the school there. Any time senseless violence involves one of our children, it gravely affects us all. I want to assure you that the community is safe as the Sayreville Police Department and Middlesex County Prosecutor's Office have launched a detailed investigation this morning on behalf of a shocked and saddened community. I want to say that Sayreville stands in solidarity with the child and the family and friends who are enduring this inconceivable ordeal. Anyone with information or surveillance footage of the area is asked to call the Sayreville Detective Michael Piriguay at 732-727-4444, where you can call the Middlesex County Prosecutor's Office, Jose Rosario, 732-745-3289. Very sad. Now, let's see here. Um, okay, so let me go back to where you guys are. I'm trying to get back into the live stream. Let's see if I'm able to do that. taking a moment. It's taking more than a moment. Let me see here. 
Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, hang on for a minute because it's just, uh, I'm not going to press any more buttons. Yeah, it's 33 degrees. I cannot believe this. This is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. Oh my goodness. All right. What is going on? I hope I didn't lose the internet or something. It's saying it's very windy. My computer is saying it's very windy. And I can't get to you guys. So I don't know what's going on. And I just heard something like, I don't know if that was my modem or something going crazy. Hold on, I'm going to try to close a bunch of things and see if I can force it to open the door and let me in. Let her in. Open the door, let her in. Hold on, it's trying to shut a bunch of stuff for me. Okay. Gotta shut down a bunch of stuff there. Hang on if you're there, okay? Because I have something else. But this is crazy. Okay. Well, I have to get back into it. Closed my live out, which is crazy that it did that. But we will try it over here again. Hopefully, you guys are still there. Or I will just start over again. I hear my computer and stuff making. a bunch of, I just heard my computer, another computer restart, so, I don't know if I'm live or not, but I will check, oh, brother, maybe I am, let me see. Oh, I still am. Okay, there you are. Thank you for staying with me. Wow. Okay. No more Michael Myers. No more Michael Myers. I see Gypsy Road is trading up already. She's trading up. Who she got? She who'd she get? Hi, lovely lyrics. Thanks for waiting around. 
I don't think she traded up. I don't think she has anybody yet, does she? I think she probably has that the guy that, hi, Linda Uribe. My son and I are doing a turkey with dressing and mashed potatoes and gravy and green beans for Easter, not being on ham. That sounds lovely, Linda Uribe. That's very nice. Sounds very nice. Um, Linda Uribe, update for getting close to four years. Oh my goodness, one more month and you'll be four years. For as a Sergeant Rambler, Linda Uribe, thank you for being a Sergeant for 47 months. That's terrific. All right, uh, public service announcement, Portmaster, is it free? What? I don't know what you're talking about, Mr. Electric. Um, let's see. Going through mail and stuff, listening, about to fix a snap. Aha, uh -huh, lovely lyrics. That's nice. So, um, that's a lot of the true crime. You love my voice. Thank you, lovely lyrics. Appreciate that. It's very nice. So, um, is it cold by you, Linda Uribe? Is it cold? Put everybody put your temperature, your current temperature in right now so we can see how warm or cold it is. It is 31 and windy here right now. You're tired and sleepy, Linda? All right, hon. Get some good rest. Love you, sweet dreams. Let's see. It's 47, little lady. Oh, lady. It's better than uh, 31, right? Yeah. I'm sorry about the crunching in the background. I know that it's very loud, but I have some bad crunchers. Nobody else is going to put their temperature in. Nobody else is going to play the temperature game. That's okay. Margo, what's it in your neck of the woods? Lovely lyrics. What is it in yours? 47 for lovely lyrics. Look, just like a little lady. They're tied the highest temperature so far. You're in the teens and it's a blizzard tonight. Two storms to hit you. Oh boy, Linda. Yikes. You're, you're in the lead with the lowest temp. You're in the lead with the lowest temps. And lovely lyrics and the lighty. They're tied for the highest temps. And nobody else is playing with us. Uh oh, I know why. Because I'm in top chat and not live chat. That's great. Mr. Electric. Mr. Electric. Okay. High has 39. High, you're in the middle. And so far, we have not had any other. Any others? Oh boy. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy.
About 30 there, Marco. High 61. We did get Todd's doctor done. And he has meds, and me too. And got groceries and picked up all the mail. Great. It's 1119 there in Colorado. I hear you. No? Okay, Linda. Some people do. <laughs> some people do, and some people make it well known that they do. And we've made our, and we've made our, what did they say? And we made our grievances very well known. Yeah, yeah, that would have, you know, come on. It's life, right? We've got bad crinklers, bad crinklers. You fell asleep, Sandra M. Oh my gosh. But it's four degrees. That's not fun, Sandra. That's not fun at all. Not fun at all. Four degrees. It's ridiculous, actually. Actually, it's ridiculous. Hi, Heart Made Wise. So anyway, what else is going on? I don't know. My daughter's coming tomorrow. She was going to come tonight. Then she had stuff with uh, her kitty cat. And she hates to leave her little kitty cat. And cats are not like you can just bring them somewhere else. Because if you just bring them somewhere else, like if she brought the cat here, the cat would be like traumatized. You know, because he's in a different environment, first of all. And then there's like a bunch of doggies and... And then they just spend the entire time being traumatized and either probably hiding under like a bed or something. It's, they're just not like, that's the thing about cats, right? They're easier to leave where they are. But and my daughter hates to leave her and she just got back from like 11 days over in Italy. But anyway, she's coming in tomorrow. And I think we're going to go out to a restaurant for Easter. That's what my son said would be a good idea. Give mom uh, a break. And uh, they, they wanted, Gia texted me and she's like, we call this Indian place we love and they're open on Easter. And I'm like, well, I don't know how the kids and Jimmy and everybody would be on that. Uh, maybe we'll go somewhere else. We'll see. Yeah. I don't know. But uh, we'll, we'll see, right? It's the company. Right. And not like dogs at all, right? Love the lyrics. You can't just... Well, I mean, like, dogs get, like, freaked out, too. Like, my, even my dog, when growing up, even... Well, we would go to my uncle's, which is just a couple of houses away, like on the same lake. If we would bring him inside there, he would just be freaked out. Like, not like freaking, freaking out, but just like you could tell, just like not comfortable. Like, wh where are we? Why are we in this house? You know, let, let's leave. That, that way, but not like a cat would be. You're right. Not like a cat would be. Okay, thanks, Mr. Electric. So let's see. Um, what was I going to? Alice, I was going to say, um, Mr. Electric slide. What is everybody else doing? Linda's having a um, turkey. What are you doing? What What is everyone else doing? Buffet sounds good, lovely. What's everybody else doing? Let me know. What are you doing? Hmm. 
I want to make an Easter bread. I've got to see if I have my uh, yeast. I just want to do that at least. I haven't um, done a whole lot with that. It's so early this year. It doesn't even, it's, I don't know, everything is just crazy. We have a Western Sizzling Buffet. Western Sizzling Buffet. Huh. I'm not sure what that is. A Western Sizzling Buffet. Western Sizzling, huh? You'll probably do nothing at High 61. <coughs> Your dinner's next weekend. Oh, church and maybe the lake. the ducks. Nice. We're having ham and scalloped potatoes. Nice, Sandra. Huh. Isn't that interesting? Oh, it's a steakhouse? I see. That sounds nice. I'm freezing, yeah. Chicken and spinach enchiladas from the fresh market, string beans and hot cross buns. Okay. That's good. That's good. Usual all you can eat grilled steak and chicken. Okay. Sounds good. So much work to do. Ethan's going to install. Um, and, and he's going to he's going to put together some shelves for me tomorrow that I have. Well, yeah, I just said we're going to a restaurant. I, um, you don't remember the last time? Well, I don't know. I, I, when I called my son, he said, well, why don't we do a restaurant this year, you know? That way everybody can, like, relax and not have to, and, and really spend time talking and visiting and all that stuff, right? Without having to worry about everything, but... So, I mean, it's, it sounds like a good idea. It sounds like a good plan. Because it just, it snuck up and it's like so, um, I mean, I got the kids, you know, their stuff for their, <laughs> I, I give them all like Easter baskets, even though it's like, you know, they don't think the bunny's coming anymore and bringing it. But, um, and I actually felt bad, like, because I didn't dye eggs and then, but I'm, I'll probably dye eggs and make an Easter bread if I can tomorrow do it for that just dye the eggs for the the other ones that go on the easter bread but i painted eggs with watercolors <laughs> so um 
And I know this sounds weird. I feel like just painting all of my regular, even my regular eggs. Every time I get them from the farm with watercolors, I just think it'd be cool. But, um, yeah, I did that this year. Because you got some you just got to give it, like, it doesn't matter. You don't have to do the same thing every, every year. Like, sometimes we get so trapped up in these rituals and it's everything depends on them and it's like it doesn't <sighs> everyone's lucky to be with family yeah Linda everybody is lucky to be with family if they are right we stress way too much over the little stuff Lots of little stuff that's stressing over. Lots of it. It's crazy. The cook never rests, right, Linda? But then there's always like certain desserts I make or certain this, you know, but I have to give myself a break sometimes. It just, holidays are hard. And even if you think like, oh no, it's okay. No, 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 no. That stuff still affects you. I'm just looking down here and I just see a shell that it's pink made me. And I think she made it for Easter last year with the bunny and with the cottontail. But I think she sent it to me a long time after because it seems like I received it maybe six months ago. But it's right in time now for Easter, huh? Peter Cottontail. Hopping down the bunny trail. It's like Easter just snuck up. I didn't get any of my Easter decorations out, you know. I don't know, it just never... I don't know what's uh, something's something's just feel like I had it together a couple of years ago the last well, the last couple of years Easter has been crazy because last year Ethan had COVID which, because of that, we didn't, of course, have anyone over or celebrate. And then the year before that, I believe, believe Gia had COVID. And Michael, I believe they both did. And so that was another Easter we were in it together and then I think prior to that was that year I was making all the Easter bread I seem to have been better that year like getting I don't know things together I don't I don't know what how much I did with decorations and stuff I think I even did a tutorial and made like that um, little thing with the carrots and stuff so I don't know what The deal is, I guess, um, it snuck up on me. I don't know. I think there's just a lot going on. I think I really am. I don't know. Struggling with a lot, I guess. Let's see. 
You're the old, you're the old grandma. Your ideal would be to be with your husband and all of us have dinner at grandma's home. Yeah, Linda, we all would like to be, I'm sure, with people we've lost, right? Thanks, hi. When you are 80, you just go with the flow. Yeah. Yep. I, I've i done a lot of like trying to get some stuff organized and whatnot. Um, but it's like, I don't know. I just don't know. I need like, I need to have like, just a, a craft room that's really functional and I'm really stressed out because I have like a bunch of tests this week and I just have this the more I think about it, this this weird feeling in my neck and, and like my chest. I think, I don't know if it has to do with my thyroid, if it has to do with nodules on my thyroid, I don't know what it is. And I've even thought of not going and having the ultrasound right now. And then I've got like a bunch of other things testing coming up midway through the month and then I had somebody tell me about like something else that got another issue I have and they had something similar but well, they didn't have the same things that I did but it's just like I don't know it's just I'm really weighing me down But you do have, you do have Todd feeding him. He's lost so much weight. I could see his bones in his back, so I'm making things. Oh, that's nice, Linda. Yeah, I know it's not. Gotta watch, yeah, I know. Is that something that, you know, I'm trying, it's just, it's an unbelievable amount of just oh, so much stuff. What are you guys doing, honey? 
Honey? What? What are you doing? Nothing. Why? Just talking. What's happening? Just talking? Mm-hmm. Are you getting hit? Huh? So. What, honey? Nothing. Why, what happened? Nothing. to get the wood for it. I've got so many what now? I'm talking. Oh you're talking? I hear you. I've got to get uh, wood for my hallway. Got to, uh, so much stuff I want to get painted and I've got to get that done before I go away. I'm gonna get that you want for the hallway? Yep. Oh I know we'll do it. And uh as well. Think of all the things your family is wonderful. Yeah. Good night, Linda. Have a good night. I just wish it would warm up. Oh my gosh. That's another thing that doesn't help is this is cold, cold weather. This weather is crazy. It's it's now below freezing and, and windy. 31 degrees. I don't know. I don't know. But I probably better go and clean. Got a bunch of stuff to organize and a bunch of stuff to get done. So maybe I'll do word cookies and then we'll call it a night. It'll be one o'clock and maybe I can get, I don't know, clean for an hour or so. Try to organize some stuff and it's silly because I think there's even a sale tomorrow. So I just have to Come up with a better way. Where's that? Bedford. Bedford weather. It warms during the day and then at night it gets super cold. Yeah, but it's not even warm here during the day. It's disgusting. It's ridiculous. I told you I opened the door. I thought it was um, nice, but it totally wasn't. Nope. At all. So, that's that, right? Anyway, let's do the uh, word cookies, I think. Let's do the word cookies. And do, Sandra? I don't know.
You're not looking forward to the summer heat, lovely? What? Oh, you talking? Why am I? I am. <laughs> I am. really it's feeling in my neck and I told the doctor about it you know and it's like she didn't feel the nodules but it's like and when I'm reading about it I don't know and I think the more that I'm thinking about it when I feel about it I get it's the anxiety that's making it worse and it's like it's really bothering me Well, there's not riser, but there's rise, Mr. Electric. Can you hear you when you talk that low? Yes, yeah. they can hear me. Good. Hopefully, you guys are doing have, have some fun. Ask anybody if they need to buy some yellow high heels. Rub. Oh, there's no more three little words. So it's going to be B. It's going to be L. We got that risable. Very good. I bear us. He really riles my feathers. He really riles my feathers.
I tried goons. Try goons. Nope. <laughs> I tried goo. I tried goo. Bongos, right? All right. Oh boy, what do you think? What do you think? <laughs> I don't know, I just put that in there and it was there. I'm crazy.
Okay, let's see. Rula, that's very good. Who got that? Hi, 61. Hi, Pudding. Long time no see. How are you? Long time no see. Goal. Very good. Rio. But there is one more thing. I know. Rig the rig. Okay, and
collage. Very good there, high 61. Very good, high 61. Very good. Is this this foot should this be? I don't know what it should be. Um, clog I got. Local, local, very good. Local, right. And then loca, living la vida. No, he doesn't like that one. Living la vida, loca didn't like it. Sorry. I don't know. Two more words. Come on, guys. Can we get this? I don't know. Oh, Cole KJ. So we already have all that. Okay. How to begin with an L or an O. Vogel. Okay, one more. Is, it's got to begin with anything.
Okay, good, 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 good. If I had the energy right now, I'd probably put a bread in to rise and let it rise all night. Huh? I don't even have any energy. I'm like losing my energy to do what I said. Uh, that I'm going to clean for a couple of hours tonight and try to organize some of the stuff that I have here. Now I'm just like falling asleep already. I don't know. It meant you and I got that at the same time.
Okay. Okay, let's see now.
I don't know. I can't even think anymore. Got a lot to do. I better just call it a night, guys. Thank you for hanging out um, amidst all those terrible stories and all that stuff. Appreciate it, and I will talk to you tomorrow, everybody. Have a good one. Be good. I love you guys. God bless. Prayers, and see you tomorrow. Bye-bye now. Love you.